One of the great advantages of phaser analysis is that it allows us to use the circuit analysis techniques that we developed for DC circuits on some AC circuits. One of those analysis techniques we developed was superposition. When we first learned about superposition, the examples with which we worked seemed contrived, and we were left with the impression that superposition created more work than it saved. The reason the examples seem contrived is that they were. The practical importance of superposition becomes apparent when looking at circuits that have more than one type of source. Sinusoidal steady-state analysis applies to circuits that have constant amplitude sinusoidal sources that have the same frequency. What if our circuit has both sinusoidal and DC sources? Or if the circuit has more than one sinusoidal source and those sources have different frequencies? That is when superposition becomes a necessary tool for analysis. The reason for this may already be obvious to you. If we think about a circuit with energy storage devices in it, the effect those devices will have will depend upon the type of source that is present. An inductor will look like a short circuit to a DC voltage source. It will have an impedance for one sinusoidal source, and for a high frequency sinusoidal source it may practically look like an open circuit. The presence of the inductor will have very different effects on the circuit for each of the situations. Let us take a look at a circuit that contains a sinusoidal source and a DC source. In this circuit, we would like to know the time-dependent voltage across the 2 kilo ohm resistor. Since the capacitor in the circuit will look different to the two different types of sources, we will have to use superposition on the circuit. If we turn off a sinusoidal source, we can look at the output due to the 10 volt source. Remember that turning off a voltage source results in zero volts or a short circuit being placed where the source was. The capacitor blocks DC, so to determine the DC voltage across the 2 kilo ohm resistor, we can simply do voltage division. This results in a DC potential of 1 volt. Returning to the original circuit, in order to determine the effect of the sinusoidal source, we can turn off the 10 volt DC source. Since it is a voltage source that is turned off, we will get 0 volts, which is the same as a short circuit. Now we are left with a circuit that contains only a sinusoidal voltage source. We can easily analyze this circuit in the phasor domain. The sinusoidal source has no phase angle associated with it, so taking it to the phasor domain consists of writing the magnitude as a phasor with a zero degree phase angle. The capacitor in the phasor domain becomes an impedance of 1 over j omega c. A capacitor of 4 microfarads with a sinusoidal source with an angular frequency of 200,000 radians per second results in an impedance of minus j 1.25 kilo ohms. So here is the circuit in the phasor domain with the phasor voltage VO being the voltage across the 2 kilo ohm resistor. The 2 kilo ohm and the 18 kilo ohm resistor are in parallel and combined to a 1.8 kilo ohm resistor. Remember that combining resistors in parallel does not affect the voltage across the combination of resistors. Combining those resistors allows us to solve for the phasor voltage using voltage division. VO will then be the 1.8 kilo ohm resistor divided by the sum of impedances in series times the source voltage. Since all of the computations are multiplications and divisions, we should convert the phasors to polar form. The magnitude will then be the product of 1.8 times 2 divided by 2.19, and the phase angle will be 0 degrees plus 0 degrees minus the negative 34.78 degrees. The original problem was to determine the time-dependent voltage across the 2 kilo ohm resistor. At this point, we have a DC voltage and a phasor voltage. We must convert the phasor voltage back to the time domain. That is done by taking the magnitude and the phase angle and inserting them into the cosine function with the angular frequency of the source. To express this as a single voltage source, we simply express it as the sum of the sinusoidal and DC voltages. This signal represents a sinusoid with a DC offset. Sometimes I have seen students try to add the 1 volt DC to the 1.64 volt magnitude. That would be incorrect. Adding a constant to a sinusoid does not affect the peak to peak voltage of the sinusoid. That would be like saying I could increase the height of the ripples in a cup of coffee an inch by adding an inch of coffee. That would just be a mess. Now we will look at a more interesting example. In this circuit I have a 15 volt DC source, a sinusoidal voltage source with a magnitude of 2 volts and an angular frequency of 10,000 radians per second, and a sinusoidal current source with a magnitude of 1.5 microamps and an angular frequency of 600 million radians per second. We already learned in the last example that we need to analyze the DC and the sinusoidal source separately. In this example, we will also see how different the impedance of the energy storage device is to each of the two individual sinusoidal sources. Determining V out for this circuit will require us to 
use superposition. And since we have three sources in the circuit, that will require us to do three separate analyses. To start with the easy one, we will analyze a contribution of the output voltage due to the 15 volt source. Turning off the voltage source on top results in zero volts. So we will replace that with a wire. Turning off the current source on the bottom results in zero amps. So we have replaced that source with an open circuit. With only a DC source present, the capacitor looks like an open circuit and the inductor looks like a wire. That means whatever current goes through the five kilo ohm resistor will go through the two kilo ohm resistor. And the voltage across the two kilo ohm resistor will be the same as the DC contribution to V out. We can solve for the DC voltage by doing voltage division between the two kilo ohm and the five kilo ohm resistor. This results in a voltage of 4.29 volts DC. Going back to the original circuit, we can analyze the contribution of the sinusoidal voltage source. To do that, we will turn off the DC voltage source by replacing it with a wire and turn off the AC current source, replacing it with an open circuit. Now we have a circuit with a sinusoidal source and there is one frequency, so we can move it to the phasor domain. The time dependent voltage that we are looking for will simply be written as a phasor. Since the voltage source does not have a phase angle associated with it, its phasor representation will simply be the magnitude times E to the j is zero degrees. The impedance of a capacitor is one over j times the angular frequency times the capacitance, giving us an impedance of minus j 25 kilo ohms. The impedance of the inductor will be j times the angular frequency times the inductance, giving us an impedance of j times 0 0.3 ohms. Now with the circuit in the phasor domain, we can take steps to determine the phasor voltage VO1. The circuit will help demonstrate another technique that is available to us. In this case, I notice the voltage source is in series with the minus J25 kilo ohm impedance. A voltage source in series with an impedance can be transformed into a current source in parallel with the same impedance. Yes, source transformations can still be done in the phasor domain. To determine the value of the current source, we simply take the voltage divided by the impedance, which I will convert to polar form, resulting in an 80 microamp current source with a phase angle of 90 degrees. We then have the two kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the minus J 25 kilo ohm impedance. These can be combined into a 1.987 minus J 0.159 kilo ohm impedance. Now with an impedance in parallel with a current source, we can perform another source transformation so that we'll have a voltage source in series with an impedance. To do this, we simply multiply the current times the impedance and redraw the circuit. With that transformation, we have all of the elements of the circuit in series, and we can use voltage division to determine VO1, which will be the voltage across the five kilo ohm resistor. This will result in a phasor voltage with a magnitude of 114.1 millivolts and a phase angle of 86.73 degrees. Taking that phasor voltage back to the time domain shows us that the contribution of the two volt, 10 kiloradian per second voltage source is an output voltage with a magnitude of 114.1 millivolts and an angular frequency of 10 kiloradians per second and the phase angle of 86.73 degrees. We have the contribution from one more source to analyze. To look at the contribution of the 1.5 microamp source, we turn off both of the voltage sources by replacing them with wires. We are left with a circuit that has a sinusoidal source. We can then convert this to the phasor domain for analysis. The contribution of the current source V out 2 of T will simply be rewritten as a phasor voltage. The current source will simply be rewritten with a magnitude of 1.5 microamps and no phase angle. The four nanofarad capacitor becomes an impedance of one divided by J times the angular frequency times the capacitance resulting in an impedance of negative J times 0 0.4167 ohms. The 30 microhenry inductor becomes an impedance of J times the angular frequency times the inductance resulting in an impedance of J times 18 kilo ohms. The circuit is now in the phasor domain. To begin analyzing this circuit, the first thing I notice is the parallel impedances at the top of the circuit. Since combining them does not affect the voltage we are trying to determine, we can combine them into a single impedance. Notice that because the impedance of the capacitor is so much smaller than the resistor, the impedance of the capacitor dominates the parallel combination. By that I mean the impedance is almost entirely imaginary. Our simplified circuit is one source transformation away from everything being in series. If we multiply the current source times the impedance it is in parallel with, we get the equivalent voltage of 27 millivolts with a phase angle of 90 degrees. The phasor voltage we are trying to determine is again the potential across the five kilo ohm resistor. Since everything is in series, we can calculate VO2 
using voltage division. This results in a phasor voltage with a magnitude of 7.23 millivolts and a phase angle of 15.5 degrees. This phasor is then converted back to the time domain, remembering that the original angular frequency was 600 mega radians per second. We can then take all three of these sources back to the original circuit. The contribution of the DC source was 4.29 volts. The contribution of the 10 kiloradian per second source was a cosine function with a magnitude of 114.1 millivolts and a phase angle of 86.73 degrees. The contribution of the 600 mega radians per second source was a cosine function with an amplitude of 7.23 millivolts and a phase angle of 15.5 degrees. Since none of these voltages are similar signals, we simply write the output voltage as a sum of each of the results. So now we should know that sources have to be the same type in order to be analyzed together. Not only that, but sinusoidal sources must have the same frequency to be analyzed at the same time. If the sources are not of the same type, we'll have to use superposition to solve for the desired quantity. We also saw that we can do source transformations on circuits in the phasor domain, and we successfully did several of them. We also observed that the final answers or solutions of the circuit must be expressed in the domain in which they are requested. If we are asked to determine a time domain signal, our final answer must be expressed in the time domain. Be careful when writing the final answer for these types of problems. Sometimes we have a strong desire to combine these functions even though they cannot be combined mathematically. DC voltages cannot be added to the magnitude of the sinusoid, nor can two sinusoids of different angular frequencies be added directly. That's all for today. Go out and make it a great one.